In this segment, we're going to talk about sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, also called encoder-decoder models. So we've talked about both language modeling uh, and also classification. But there's an important class of tasks which look like mapping from an input sequence of tokens to an output sequence of tokens. Um, and a lot of kind of surprising things can be cast into this, uh, can be viewed in this way. So for example, syntactic parsing, which is going to be about building tree structures over sentences, can actually be viewed as producing this kind of goofy uh, sequence of bracketed tokens as an output given just the natural language sentence as input. Um, semantic parsing, which is a kind of variant that uh, resembles kind of translating natural language into source code, can also be viewed as basically mapping from a sequence of tokens here, which is a query, what states border Texas, into a lambda calculus expression that uh, can be executed against a database. So there are lots of reasons why, rather than just kind of doing autocomplete with language models, we might want to view these or sort of use transformers more as kind of transducers to produce outputs that are of a different modality than their inputs. Um, machine translation is another great example, like kind of translating things into other languages. Um, and so what I'll say is a kind of note that conceptually, we're thinking about the inputs and outputs of sequence to sequence models as very distinct things compared to language modeling, where we think about there is like there's just one sequence and you're going to uh, kind of crank through and, and autocomplete that sequence. Now, models like ChatGPT actually do all of this basically as language modeling with a shared vocabulary. So the distinction's been a little bit blurred, but if you look in the literature, it's still important to uh, kind of understand the, the distinctions here. All right, so what are seek to seek models? These are words that are going to generate next words conditioned on the previous output, which is very similar to what language models do, as well as their input. So if we want to translate a sentence into French, we have this input that we're going to call x. The movie was great. And we're going to start generating our output sequence, kind of like language modeling. Uh, we're going to produce a contextualized representation, and then we're going to form a distribution via a softmax over the vocabulary and get our first uh, predicted token y1. Now, critically, the transformer here is going to be able to look back, or you know, for any sequence-to-sequence -sequence model, but especially for transformers, they're going to be able to look back at the input and do this generation conditioned on what's in the input. Um, so we can write the distribution that we get out this way, which, again, looks exactly like a language model, but everything here is conditioned on x. Uh, and well, the other kind of key difference here is we actually have two models floating around, right? So unlike a language model where we have like one transformer, here we're going to have a decoder that has separate parameters and can actually have a separate vocabulary from the encoder. Okay, so how does this work? Well, it's very similar in many ways to language models, just with this kind of encoder block hanging around. So we're going to kind of generate the first word if we're doing inference. And then uh, we feed that in to the uh, next step of the model, just like language modeling kind of consumes the, the token for the next time step. Um, and we're going to do that repeatedly until we generate a stop token. So unlike language modeling, when a lot of times we're just kind of happy to go on forever, um, here when we're doing something like machine translation, we have a notion of, OK, we're, we're done, and now we're going to stop. So that's a little more common to see in this uh, kind of way of doing things. So, just like in language modeling, we need to run inference up to a particular point in the computation graph, take the argmax, get the next word, and then feed that into uh, basically feed that into the next step uh, of the model to predict the next output word. Uh, and this will kind of move along one at a time. The kind of key thing here that uh, saves us time and makes this not be super slow is the fact that the encoder only needs to be run once. So the whole the movie was great piece doesn't interact with the decoder, actually. The decoder looks back at it, but um, the movie was great is just encoded separately. And so uh, we could just do that once in advance. Um, 
this whole thing, what I've drawn up here is a computation graph. You can train this end to end to maximize the probability of the gold sequence. Now the model will learn to kind of look back at the input and it'll use that information when generating these outputs. So we've said that language modeling is this impossible task. Well, machine translation is difficult, but not impossible in the same way, right? Like we basically know what this sentence is gonna say. And so the entropy of these distributions is a lot lower. All right, so I keep talking about models looking back, transformers, et cetera. So the actual transformer, which we showed uh, a little while ago, has this ability kind of baked in. And that's what's going on inside this uh, unit here. So there is a multi-head attention component of the decoder that's able to look back at the representations computed by the encoder. Uh, so this include there's there's basically two steps of multi-head attention. There's one in the output for just kind of looking at prior things in the output, and then there's one that allows you to look back at the input as well. Uh, and otherwise, like all the pieces here are basically the same, so there's nothing really new architecturally, but this gives you the kind of full, fully general uh, mechanism that allows you to uh, kind of model all of this stuff. Um, and uh, that's basically the uh, kind of architecture that really is getting used for everything these days. Um, you know, the kind of autoregressive models like ChatGPT can be viewed as special cases of this, um, but this is kind of the, the main idea. That's the end of the segment.